you know what that sound means. Oh, welcome, man. welcome to Smashing Heads Podcast. Sorry, I botched your open. You did. It's episode 19, but it's boys' night. And we're here to extinguish your fear. Uh, maybe. I don't know about that, but... Uh, Is anybody afraid tonight? They might be after watching that episode and uh, seeing the preview for the elimination, but... If you're new here, my name is Zach, and that music signifies that we are not joined by my wife, Hannah, but we are joined by my best friend, Jake. How's everybody doing or not? Now, let me say up top, Hannah's not here because we go on vacation tomorrow. We fly out and... Without me. Without you, yeah. And we have uh, a pretty long flight. We're going across the country, and she has some sort of sinus infection or cold... The strep test came back negative, but they're treating her as if she has strep, and she can't talk very much at all. Well, and I'm coming in a little sickly myself tonight. Yeah, you're you're a little under the weather and coughing. I actually feel okay. Um, Which is not common. Normally, you're the one sick. Yeah, yeah, it depends. I think I think with her, it's gotten super cold in Tennessee out of yeah. nowhere. Like it, chance- there, was, there was no fall, really. No, and chances of snow and uh, sleet and stuff tomorrow through Thursday. So, that may be part of it, but she can't talk. Her voice is gone, and she did watch the episode with us. We have her notes. We'll hit those at the end of the show, but again, Jake's not feeling great either, so if you hear anybody coughing, it's probably him. Cause so she, I, yeah, I'll just apologize in advance. I've got two cough drops opened up, ready to pop in my mouth, so if you hear some crunch, a uh, cough, a sniffle, um, I'm sorry. There's yeah. nothing I can do about it. H- Hannah's actually in the other room packing for our trip, so uh, if anyone has any suggestions on what to do in Southern California while we're out there, uh, hit us up. We had to move our trip uh, because of all the forest fires. So, speaking of that up top, I have a real quick uh, note to our listeners. Um, Normally, we always record night of, Tuesday nights, after the episode premieres. It goes up that night. That's right. So, with all of the forest fires and all that that's happening in california which is awful and i hope if we have any listeners in those areas that they're safe and made it out and all that and the the problem is we were supposed to go into the san diego area well san diego just announced yesterday to be ready to evacuate at any moment's notice because of what's happening so we had to move our trip around we're still going to california just not san diego anymore because of that our flights had to change so we are actually flying back from California to Tennessee while next week's episode is airing. <coughs> There's Jake calling. Yeah. So what we're going to let you guys know is next week's podcast will just go up basically one day later than normal because none of us work on Wednesday. Jake's not working on Wednesday. We're going to get back from our vacation. We're going to come together like we normally do Come except together i don't know if we can we, can, we don't have the rights to that song i can sing it right uh, i don't yeah we can <laughs> uh so we're going to watch it together on wednesday and then we're going to put our podcast up wednesday evening so we will be probably missing on social media all tuesday and then wednesday until we record because we do not want to ruin anything for us And I have a feeling, I don't have any solid information on this, I have a feeling this finale is going to be two parts anyway, so it'll go actually an extra week. Do you you kind of agree with that? I do. Um, The the way that they've just been drawing it out, I feel like there's no way they're going to get all that in into one week next week. So even though the finale starts, we wanted to let you guys know up top, we will just be one day behind. I know a lot of other podcasts, we're the only one that I know of that goes night of, um, but... We, we like it that way, and this is just a one-time exception. It literally only changed because of the way that the fires are happening in, in California. We had to rebook some flights, like, literally yesterday morning. Well, and for us, we uh, are firm believers in good communication, and if we don't communicate this kind of information to you, we let you down severely. Yeah, I, I know a lot of people listen to it first thing in the morning on Wednesdays on their way to work or whatever. We've got people that wait for it to go up. Yeah, not up. If we, we do have some, and that's, that's going to be just delayed by basically probably not even a full 24 hours, but, you know, just say a day. Um, and initially, we were going to try to record just the way our, our 
flights worked out. We were going to record in California with Jake in Tennessee. It'll actually end up being a better show with all of us together because we can feed off each other and like know who wants to talk when. It's we've done it before. It's hard. We could even feed each other too if we, we wanted we to. We could. What what interview did we do? Or epi- it was Marie, wasn't it? What remote? Yeah, where you weren't here. That and the Brandon interview. I stayed home for that one. That's what it was. Brandon interview. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's that's tough. It is. We, it's we, weird. We learned after that that it's tough not having the people in the room with you, uh, just because we feed off of each other's like body language and wanting. Like we know when someone wants to talk out of us. We've been doing it long enough now. So we we wanted to let you guys know that I think. I'd played with the idea of doing that anyway with our initial schedule because I think it's going to make a better show on our end, and we want you guys to have the best show possible. That's so right. That's the plan. We know the episode's going to premiere Tuesday of next week. We will not have a podcast up till Wednesday. Please don't tweet spoilers at us. I, I'm What I'm going to do personally... Is mute everyone. Well, I'm on my, like personal account i'm gonna unfollow everyone challenge related Ch- the official challenge twitters and all that because i don't want to see any spoilers that's hot and heavy right there. i know so if uh if any of our friends shane marie uh random people that follow us don't get offended if we unfollow you and then follow you back because we just don't want to screw up our take on the show because we like to give a fresh that's right what mm, an, an unbiased like un untainted opinion which we'll get into that later because we we both had well all three of us had some issues with the way that things were edited tonight we would want you to give as they do on rotten tomatoes right give us a fresh review so we we've got to be fresh right yeah we'll, we'll yeah. be rotten with it yeah we don't we don't want rotten reviews no um and so again we wanted to hit that up top uh there's really not anything we could do about it we we again we're going to try to record in california but now our flights are literally we're in the air during the the premiere next week, so not possible, and uh, we won't be able to be in until Wednesday, not, uh, early morning at the earliest. So yeah, it is what it is. Hopefully, you guys will stick with us. If uh, for some reason you're friends with people on Twitter or whatever that listen to us and they're wondering where it's at and they haven't got caught up, just let them know. But this is what we do for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world. Millions around the world that watch us every week. To to quote the great Michael Buffer. I don't even know who that is. That's the guy who announces like the big fights, right? Oh, okay. I didn't know his name. To the thousands in attendance. Yeah, yeah. I know you're talking about Millions watching around the world. Finish it. Get your rumble (laughs) on. No. (laughs) I know. It's it's, let's get ready to rumble. No. He gives it a ladies and ladies and gentlemen. Let's get ready to rumble. Uh, he gives a better one. Yeah, I know. I'm, but I'm not. I'm not paid. You're to no do that. Michael Buffer. I'm not. I didn't know his name until just now. <laughs> so, uh, again, that that's basically all the the stuff we had up top before tonight's episode. Well, real quick. Okay. We wanted to give a quick thank you. That's right. You, you to did. to everyone because last week, for whatever reason, everyone just kind of decided to love on us real big, and it was really stinking awesome uh you know we we see the numbers we get download wise listen wise and everything but to see you guys uh and it was specifically on twitter yeah yeah and um man we were legitimately moved by that um and i don't mind thanking these people by name is that okay with you i don't care i feel like if you do that you're gonna leave some people out no i've got the tweets right here oh you did okay i got the tweets right here that's fine uh our guy Mikey, Mike, for sure. I mean, he's, you know, he's been here since early days. That's our guy. Yeah, been with us since the, uh, the early days. Um, not familiar with King Adrian, no. Which is a Devin Tony and Cara defender. Okay, but you know what? Shout out to King Adrian. Yeah. Um, we will be uh, your royal courtship as a result of your compliment towards <laughs> us. Is that is that the right thing yeah, to say? Yeah, I see. I'm looking back through now. I see who it is now. Uh, I love Sudoku. <laughs> that's, that's not it but when i read it the first time that's yeah. what i thought was sudoku uh I'll, you're you're skipping one of the big ones oh yeah because i retweeted that one yeah so mary yeah mary mary who legitimately may be one of the sweetest individuals if not the sweetest yeah well, okay so just a quick clarification whenever we started this podcast i just went through and followed as many like super fans as i could I could find that people that, and I don't mean that in a negative sense, people that love the show, love talking about it, love, 
you know, tweeting about it. And so Mary, we followed her way back in the day. I didn't know she didn't listen to us or anything like that because we we don't know. And but yeah, she she said she uh, she deemed us her side chick. She did. She's like, I'm I'm loyal to Challenge Mania, which that's fine. They're a great podcast. Yeah. They do good work. She, she's like, but I've got a new love, and that that's very flattering to us. What an honor. Yeah. Right. And a lot of people weighed in on that, and so. Yeah, I mean, you, you can continue with uh, with your list if you want. Well, we had uh, Baker here, too. Uh, not Baker Mayfield, though mm. that would be pretty cool. That would be pretty cool. Um, but Baker uh, giving us some love, too. And we know there's others out there. I, yeah, that, I feel like we're going to have to speed this you up. You know? Um, Chico every week. You Chico talk every to Chico. week, yeah. Um, Brian, Brian Morin. Morin. Yeah. Hit us up. Uh, Iceland. Justin, who has a picture of... Uh, Coach Harbaugh from Michigan. You can't go wrong with that, right? Well, I mean, I don't think either of us are Michigan <laughs> fans. Uh, again, it was we had a lot of people reach out. If we if we missed you, you know, that's that's why I didn't want to name names to start off with. Nonetheless, thank you guys because seriously, we're. I mean, I don't, I don't know if we're still doing. Maybe we are. Maybe we're still doing the podcast if we've got fifty downloads a week or something. You know? Yeah, I, I think, I think when we started this, I mean, we. So just so our listeners know, we didn't have any set agenda like, hey, we need to reach X number of downloads or whatever. And we didn't give ourselves a time frame. Like we, we didn't say, hey, we'll, we'll do this for 10 episodes and if no one's listening, we'll quit. I think we just all went in like, hey, we're just going to do it and see what happens. And it's exceeded every one of the expectations we've ever had. Uh, if, if As long as everything is on trend, there's two, at least two episodes of our podcast counting the one we're recording right now and then more than likely another one so we'll be over twenty five thousand by next week yeah and uh that's huge and we're, we're gonna do what our plan is is after this after we do the final finale episode whenever that is we'll do a, a kind of end of the year recap of what our expectations were, were they met, how did we feel about this season overall, that type of thing. And then eventually we'll do a look forward to season 33 with the cast announcements. Well, and we've discussed this too. I'm actually going through right now yeah. all our old episodes. We're going to do like a top 10 like funniest moments from the podcast because that'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, we'll we'll do stuff like that. But we, we definitely, we want, we've had some people wanting us to talk about the new season they're filming right now. We don't want to get into any spoilers, but we do feel comfortable enough after this season's over, we will do an episode on the cast that we know is on the show. And that way, if you want to avoid it, you can. We're not going to mix it in with our normal episodes. But we, we know, just because it's, it's been out there, who's on the show. Yeah. I mean, unless there's some mercenaries or something along those lines. But we uh, we want to do an episode about that because uh, I'm not going to give anything away, but there's definitely some interesting names on this, this coming season. Yeah. A lot of people angry about certain things, but there's definitely things I'm excited about. So... We'll we'll probably do a whole standalone episode on that, and then uh, w- there's not any time frame. I, I'm assuming February or March when this season will premiere. Yeah, does that sound about right? Sounds about right. And you know we'll we'll probably keep in touch with you guys on uh, what we'll do in the meantime between then. Uh, we, we've talked about doing an old season, working through it with you guys. So we'll uh, we'll get to that when it comes to it. But for now. Let's get into tonight. Here we go. Um, Did they go straight from one daily to the next? This isn't a good way to start because neither one of us know. <laughs> well, that's the first thing I yeah. typed up because I don't remember them going back to the house. I mean, the the, cha- the episode last week ended with... Let me look at my notes. ...with the daily and Cam and Kaylee going home. That's right, yeah. So they went straight from one challenge... One daily to another. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's time in between. But Maybe. Yeah, that is kind of strange, though. I guess because it was a purge challenge, and there's no redemption house anymore. Uh, I, I did, whenever they came out, like, I had a familiar feeling, like, oh, yeah, they're out. And then I was like, wait, have they been out here yet? But I think it, I think it's just I saw the preview for this coming week and, you know, kind of knew what was coming on. The only thing that would lead you to believe that maybe they had gone home in between is that Polly actually had shorts on. Yes. And he didn't the and, prior challenge. And it was pretty early on in the the day it seemed. It wasn't getting dark or anything like that. Right. Um the uh 
I, I feel like it was it was there was time between. They just again, I had some problems with the way this this episode was edited. I had some problems with the look ahead from last week because it definitely gave away a big spoiler, um, in my opinion. Uh, and in in what was and what should have been a huge elimination and a big like standoff. We all in the back of our heads knew who won because of the way that the 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 footage from last week was shown, which sucks. But if I remember correctly, there was some footage shown pre elimination. There was one. Well, we'll get into that. We will. So anyway, th- this is why you're here to keep us in in yeah. line. <laughs> Just you. Uh, <laughs> this this week's uh, daily or this whatever daily, maybe the second or third one of the week. It's called Painfully Wrong. I wrote down the title of this one. Mm. It's it's the electrical fence, basically. They're running through, I think they said 7,000 volts. Uh, I do think that the the little lightning bolts that we saw on camera, I think that was CGI. What do you think about those effects? Because you're a, you're a technological guy. <laughs> <laughs> this is part of being sick. I can't talk. Yeah. Uh, you're a technical... Oh, my God. <laughs> You're a technological guy. Yeah. What do you think about that? I think that they were playing that angle up. I do think it hurt a lot. Yeah. And I think that there was shock, but I don't think there was a good visual of it. It looked. I think in real life it looked like they were just running through dangling copper wires, and that's not exciting for a visual medium. So what you would say is that those effects weren't necessarily shocking. <laughs> yeah. It. Or maybe I, they were shockingly bad, right? It, well, it, I think it was just playing up. And like the, the sounds you heard, I don't think you heard those... Until like maybe they touched them, because they they didn't mic up the anyway. It's that's TV magic, but ah, never heard of that. Ooh yeah, TV magic. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Uh, so we find out it's not just they're running through because we the, in the preview last week we saw they're getting shocked, but we don't know what the the overall game is. Yeah, we find out it's trivia part two, but this is real trivia. Yes, which that immediately we were like. Great that that explains why the last trivia was so easy. You looked at me and said, "Oh, I don't I don't even care about electrocution now." I didn't say that <laughs> at all, but I was excited that we were going to have a real trivia because we all agreed the last one was way too easy, way too easy. And but it was for charity, right? Was it? It was, wasn't it? <laughs> Am I making that up? I don't know. Hold on, let me put my. Uh... Let me put my computer to use here. So you carry on. Talk. What? What? What part? Well, hold on. No, I'm really confused now. I mean, it may. Ha- Listen, guys. When we talk for an hour plus about each one of these episodes, a lot of stuff runs together for us, and it sometimes is hard to keep track. We're not idiots. We just uh, we lose track because we try to keep talking and keep it flowing. Um, it may have been for charity. I don't remember it being for charity. The one with like the battering ram coming in through? No, oh, wait. <coughs> it's coughing again. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I feel like that was. There was something like, did people submit questions? I don't think any of this happened. It may have been, but I don't remember any of it. Well, here's the thing we know is that somebody says something crazy when somebody's sick on this show. That, well, and yeah, and it's been Hannah every time. But now it's me, and I'm here to uh, make up for the lack of nonsense. Yeah, it's a... Uh, so maybe I'm making that up. I could have sworn... I'm trying to look back through my notes and see if... I don't even remember what episode the trivia was on. It's... Oh, man, it's been so long ago. Listen, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm not a, I'm not above being wrong. <laughs> I don't even... I, I'm not even looking into it. it, it may Let's have, just disregard it. it, it just may, disregard everything I'm, I said. I'm sure Paul will email us... He knows the truth. I don't know uh, off the top of my head. That, that's thrown me for a loop. I will say, regardless of that, TJ was loving every second of tonight. Yeah. This was the giddiest TJ I think I've ever seen. And uh, the trivia was much, much harder. I will say, though, the first question was, how many are in a baker's dozen? And Natalie immediately screwed that up. I will say... She redeemed herself later on in the episode. She had some pretty dumb answers. I'll just say, though, I thought it was kind of cute. <laughs> Did you? I thought Natalie was real cute tonight. Well, I mean, she's like 4'11". She's just like a tiny little person. I mean, it moved me. It did? Yeah. In your heart? Yeah. And, you know, 
partner that with her her actual partner, Polly, who said this is just like a Saturday night. But what do you think he's up to on Saturday nights? Listen, it would not surprise me if he's like into like sex dungeons with electrocution and who knows, man. We know he likes the Joker. Yeah, again, like he like personifies the Joker on himself. And uh any anyone in real life I feel like who uses like Joker quotes is like their mindset. Like those those images and memes you'd see on Facebook. Yeah. Like that are so poorly constructed yeah. and done. There's one girl that we know that you send me screenshots of all the time. I feel like that, too, would use those. I wish I could give her name out you because she is easily the best, like, follow I have on Facebook. Because she's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I don't think she comes up with all of them on herself. I think she sees them and redoes them. If she comes up with I, all of them, man. I would quote a few on here, but she's pretty yeah, vulgar yeah, on there. Yeah, you can't. We're, we, uh, and we're, we're PG. We do this for the kids. For the kids and for the elderly. And for your kids. And for your kids. And the dogs. And, yeah, dogs don't like it either. So we get into it uh, weirdly from the beginning. Hunter and Ashley kind of target Kara and Marie, which was a weird play to me. Well, they were weird this whole challenge. Well, they they don't work well together. We we've discussed that in the past. They're horrible like partnership. Because I think they picked each team at least once. Yeah, it's very other than uh, Josh and Sylvia. Yeah, uh, it's very. Did weird. they not pick them to go through? I don't think so because they're in that big alliance together. Maybe. Yeah. But either way, there was no rhyme or reason. No, to any and of their then decisions. they 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 throw Marie and Cara in first, and then they reciprocate it. They're like, "Hey, you called us out." Then Ashley gets mad because, one, she's not very rational and thinking and when she gets like involved in games, things like that. Um, and so she, she's crying and stuff, but some of it's from the pain. Some of it's from kind of like I think she's just worked up in the moment. It, it's a weird play. Like clearly Bananas and Tony are who you should go after. I mean, I, I think from the beginning that's the play. Right. Because you know you're this close to the final. You want to do everything you can to get them out of any power position. So, especially them, because they're not in any sort of alliance with them. Um, we we kind of see them go through. Everyone's kind of tossing them back and forth. Uh, I told you from the beginning, before they started, out of everyone left, I think Sylvia might have the advantage. Because she seems maybe the most like book smart out of everybody. Yeah, That's not any like shade to anyone else, but that's just kind of what I felt. You have your strength and your strengths and your weaknesses. And I will say, strength. I will say though, Joss answered at least half of them. Yeah, like he did, he did good. Now some of them <laughs> kind of were honed into him, like the one about Fahrenheit and Celsius, and then he knew the prime minister one obviously because uh, he's in the UK, right. so he thought they were idiots. But uh, it's interesting. Uh, the the one answer that I did write down was they asked Polly and Natalie what do you call a baby deer? And she just whispered it. She's like, is it a Bambi? I mean, come on. You don't think that's cute? I think it's really dumb because Polly didn't even acknowledge her answer and said it's a fawn. I think it's adorable. Uh, I don't know. I think she she's, she even said, she's like, oh, everyone's going to think I'm so stupid or something nah, along those lines. I thought it was cute, Natalie. Um, oh, she's yeah, she's listening. We're on a first name basis. <laughs> Good. Uh, I don't even know. If, that probably is her first name. <laughs> Weirdly enough, Hannah and I go by our middle names. You sure do, don't you? Yeah. Because I, I saw a medicine bottle over there, and I didn't know that was her first name. Yeah. You go, by, you go by your first name. I do. Well, a different form of it. I'm actually Jacob. Literally. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm Zachary, so. Well, I mean, if you want to get technical. Yeah, it happens. Uh, the the weird thing in this, uh, in this like, daily today. Mm-hmm. Hunter and Ashley are in the power position. Yeah. They are on, like, stage two when everyone else is on, like, at least three, if not four. Some of them about to go through five. And then somehow they just lose their composure. Everyone starts throwing their right answers at them. And they went from being in first place by a pretty significant, like, amount to being the first team eliminated. Well, and Ashley in the process may have developed more of a disdain towards Polly than you. She did. I didn't mind Polly this episode. Do you think... Really? No, I didn't. What happened? Because I'm not playing a character like one of us. I'm just giving my opinion no, what on the show. I came around on Polly quicker than you did. That's what happened I'm here. not coming around on him. I didn't mind him this episode. This is a big moment. 
Well, we'll we'll get into all that in a, in so a minute. So you've got something to say though, right, in regards to Polly? Yes. Um, Just not right now. Yeah, because Hunter and Ashley, they're gone. It comes down to uh, Polly and Natalie, Johnny and Tony, and Josh and Sylvia. Cara and Marie are gone at this point. Yep. They hit the ground more than any other team. They were on the ground like half the time when they walked through those things. Uh, did you notice that? I did, but at the same time, Marie seemed to be the one like really attacking it. Yes, and that may have been to her own detriment. <laughs> like she was on the ground, like again every other time, and Cara was too. Because you know, most everyone was pretty like hesitant, which yeah. of course, right? I mean, you're going to get electrocuted and yeah. shocked, all this stuff, and she was like just shooting right through there. T- Tony said he's had his spleen out because remember that one time he got super sick and like turned green on That's like right. bloodlines, I think. Uh, he said he would rather do that ten times than to do this again. Which that's pretty significant to me. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he said he he wasn't exaggerating. Which, who knows if that's true? But I think, as of a viewer, I would much rather do this than have surgery ten times. Have you ever been shocked? Yeah. Have you? Yeah. Can you give the listeners those that have never been shocked? <laughs> Kind of what you just a play by play. Give us a quick play by play. I've been shocked a a few times. Uh, One of the what are you getting shocked around? (laughs) I don't know, man. It's it's so. uh, I can I've got a couple two examples that I know of for sure. All right, let's hear it. Uh, One, I was probably like uh, eleven, and my cousin Jake was probably like Mm thirteen, and we were at my grandmother's house, and it was like Christmas time, and she had those old strings of like the big colorful bulbs not the little like icicle lights like the big right like one two inch bulbs that are colored yeah and so we're putting the bulbs in because she took them all out for some reason and i'm screwing them in and jake plugs it up in the middle of me screwing it in and it explodes in my hands and it like shocked me and my hands were black and it didn't really hurt that i remember but it literally like the whole thing exploded and both my hands were pitch black and the bulb was just disintegrated. And I was like, why would you plug this in when I'm pl- like screwing the light bulbs in? And I was like, ah, I don't know. <laughs> well, you both were pretty mischievous as kids. Well, right? I mean, that was just dumb to me, but that, so, that, so was that an electrocution or just an explosion? Well, that, that one just shocked me. Uh, the, the other one, we were at our youth group, uh, back in the day mm-hmm. and, they used to have a soundboard up on stage for some reason. They had this little like podium. Oh, that's odd. That had a soundboard on it. I don't know why, but they did. And there, the 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 outlets were in the floor, not on the wall or uh-huh. anything. And they had a metal cover on the outlets. Well, what happened is they had that soundboard plugged into the outlet, and the it had tilted back to where so that the two metal prongs from like the uh, electrical cable. Yeah were like half out and half in and they're also touching the metal plug and I put my hand back because I was sitting on the stage for some reason and it touched on the metal plate and the the two prongs from the outlet and it shot waves up through my arm and I didn't know what was happening and it it, it was weird it, it hurt but it didn't like it didn't like burn or anything I don't even know how to describe it did you did you make an audible noise? Yeah, it freaked me out because like what? I leaned back and it just went and like went up through my whole arm and like I mean I don't remember if I yelled or anything, but I, I knew. <laughs> well, I was I was gonna ask like what does that sound like? I don't know, but I remember immediately like I was like oh I just got electrocuted by uh, this like half plugged in outlet and so I pushed it back in all the way. Because you know in the movies when people get electrocuted, <laughs> I specifically think about Home Alone Two. Is that what it is? I feel like it's a. Ninja Turtles movie. Oh, there's Home Alone 2 where he, he like... No, it's Batman Forever! Okay. They, uh... Oh, man. They get, uh... Batman's, like, shooting these, uh... Electrical gadgets at them. And they go... No, it didn't sound like that. You didn't do that? They, no, they... <laughs> they, uh... Do you remember in Home Alone 2? Because he, he's, uh... He's lost in New York. Oh, yeah. And... The washing machine, right? Well, it's a sink. The high, and yeah. And he hooks, like, some sort of a battery charger up to it and then he's shaking he's like ah! and then yeah and he, then he turns into a skeleton it, and then he turns into a skeleton yeah and then he uh he comes back it wasn't like that real quick 
I think Home Alone Two is better. I do too. I, I agree with that. Yeah, I, the original is really good. I think two is better though. Two is better. I yeah, for sure. So back on track here. Uh, uh, I like those stories. That was good, Zach. Yeah. So uh, again, I've I've been electrocuted. I don't know how many volts though. I didn't measure them. Um, but so there came a moment when, uh-huh. by this point, Cara Marie are eliminated. That's where yeah we were at, as well as Hunter and Ashley. And there's this point where Natalie and Polly get their question right, and the, they have the decision. They're in a to power make, position, yeah, because everyone's on the last stage, right? To either go ahead and send Johnny and Tony on through, or Joss and Sylvia. And I thought pretty bold move, right? Because I thought it was the right move. It is the right move because you, yeah. Uh, I told you when it was happening, I was like, they should send Tony and Bananas through because. This close to a final, you do not want to give that team any sort of a, an advantage. You don't know what Josh and Sylvia are going to do, but you know Tony and Bananas are a strong team and that they're going to screw everyone over that's not themselves. Yep. And so I was like, if you have a chance to get them out and not have them safe in an elimination and have a power vote, I was like, you do it, regardless of how you feel about the other team. I did think it was interesting how Bananas and Tony – were almost begging, but without begging, you know what I'm saying? They were so vocal, but as like, don't be dumb, don't think about it. And Tony was like, think about long term, which I was like, there's not much long term anymore. Yeah. But bananas just kept talking like, don't be dumb, don't don't do this, don't be and I was like, you're kinda groveling at this point. But I think that's just kind of the culmination of what they've 'cause they've had their backs against the wall the whole season pretty much. Yes, until it flipped for just a little bit, and then now it's gone again. Yep. Um, but yeah, I, I agree, and uh, I, I think it was the right move. Like I, I hundred percent think Polly made the right choice by sending them through, and especially for Natalie and Polly because they've been in the Redemption House all season. And they're they're a rogue team. Yeah. Um, if anyone out of the two, I think they would side with Bananas and Tony, but uh, she also kind of hates Bananas, and. Uh, I, I think it was 100% the right move because you, you don't know what Sylvia and Joss are. They've not won six finals. Like, it is what it is. You you take any chance you can get to get Bananas not in a power position. Yeah. And it worked. Uh, it made sense. And so it ended up Joss and Sylvia won. The two final dailies. Yeah. They win. Yeah, which is very surprising. Big. Yeah. Uh, again, they've, they've 100% surprised me this season uh at the beginning of the season i thought that they weren't going to be a very good team there were lots of other teams that a- appeared stronger or whatever for whatever reason they're gone josh and sylvia have earned their place like they've done well they haven't been in redemption once they have have they done an elimination yeah they did they won they won one yeah um, they are the you know, definition of flying under the radar because yes. you really didn't notice them all season. Yeah, and I got in a little bit of trouble for saying that they were a little boring, but it worked. Hey, man, if boring gets you to a final, you had a chance at a million dollars. Hey, go for it. Then you be boring. Yeah, they they were the team that seemed like they were around, but they weren't causing really any problems. But they also weren't a huge threat at the beginning, and because of that, they're here now. Yeah. And uh, they weren't voted in like places like they weren't a team that people were like oh we got to look out for them and it, it worked to their advantage so and now what you're seeing is is you do have to look out for them yeah because I mean, they made the final with Sylvia she's showing that she's got quite the brains on her more so than most everyone yeah, else I, on I, this I challenge I think she's got the advantage on that <clears throat> and then with Joss I mean he's shown that I mean this guy could run for a whole week and not stop yeah. You know, he's, probably, so. he's in the best shape of anyone on the show. I think. Yeah. Um, other than maybe Kara. Just because, I mean, again, she's that's all she does now, it seems. But nonetheless, quite the duo to go yeah, into I, the I final. Think, I think they're going to be f- like very formidable. It's just going to... We saw the preview for what the finale looked like, and we'll talk about that a little bit at the end. But I'm I'm excited from what we saw, at least. I think we got a good one. I hope so. I hope that they've learned from some of the other ones not to screw this up but nobody's riding on a holding on to a rail yeah that on a boat again, this time uh invasion of the champions that's the, that's still the worst finale in or my just opinion. going canoeing like we do yeah. a couple of times a summer it's uh it's dumb so uh this is the first time that we went into a vote where i felt like i had no idea how it was gonna go i thought it would be bananas and tony 
But then, you know, Josh and Sylvia kind of had in their mind, like, hey, Tony's a little out of shape. Bananas hasn't won anything in a while. Like, Which, that was the other thing, speaking of Tony being out of shape, that I took note of during yeah. that daily is, man, he's really not in good shape this season. I don't think he was planning on really being a part of this season. He was supposed to be a mercenary. Yeah. Um, he wasn't supposed to be in there from day one. And he, he said, he's been talking about on Twitter, like his uh, his dad bod got away from him a little bit. Because he's got two kids, at least. And, yeah. You know, he's home. And so, uh, and he has a big scar from where he got his spleen or whatever taken out. But Josh and Sylvia said they, they're they a little worried about Natalie and Polly because they know the finale is going to be a lot of endurance, and they know that they probably have endurance more than anything. I don't think they're the strongest team. I don't. Th- I definitely don't think they're the strongest team mentally, uh, like if it comes to puzzles or you know things like that. But I do think that's their one big advantage is going to be uh, endurance. Um, cause again, he plays soccer. She was a cheerleader. Yeah. They're they're both in good shape. Turns out they voted for Bananas and Tony anyway, and so that's the only team they could pick because Josh and Sylvia are safe. Yeah. Um. So you got the fina- the the elimination you kind of wanted. And it was a weird one. Very weird. Bananas and them are very, <coughs> still very mad about it. It um, was a weird, like, it was a weird final to determine who gets the spot in the final. Yeah, it it was strange because at first it looked like an eating challenge, and I was like, oh, Tony's going to kill this. But honestly, the eating challenge didn't really matter. No. You just had to both finish. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't like if you finished first, you got an advantage, or your teammate got an advantage. It was just like if you finish, then it's just a waiting game. Um, and I feel like Natalie had the advantage just because one, she's smaller, and I don't know specifically what goes into type like cheerleader training and stuff like that. But I'm assuming there's yoga and Pilates and things like that. Bananas is like, like he he like lifts weights. Right. He's not. I don't think he's doing a lot of yoga. He might be. Is that what you do to test how long you can hold your arms up for? Well, yoga and like Pilates and stuff, it's like a lot of stretching exercises and a lot of like holding poses. Mm. Um, Have you ever done? I haven't. No. Would uh, you ever consider? Uh, I'd consider it. We should try that together sometime. Okay. Maybe when you guys get back from California. Okay. All right. It's um, a date. It, uh, I, I, I felt like she had the advantage. The only other thing... We haven't seen anything about uh, any sort of equalizers at all. His rope did look a little tighter to me for what that's worth. Uh, but he also has a wider frame. So he's he's uh, it may have more just tension on it just in general. And he could have been holding his arms a little bit lower than she was. I can't speculate one way or the other. We did notice that they made them turn around at one point. Yeah. And they didn't address it. But then once... Well, let's let's talk real quickly about the food part. Yeah, um, it looked like paint. It look yeah, it looked like it looked like they mixed like white out, and like the way it just coated their mouths and stuff. So here's what it makes me think of. So at one point in time, I was a senior in high school, uh-huh. and I was diagnosed with appendicitis. Yeah, I but, remember that. But prior to, before they had figured that out, I had to drink this white liquid so that when I went to get an x-ray... Oh, yeah, yeah. No. It would make it, like, illuminate or whatever. Yeah. And I, I forget how big the, the, the drink was, but I had to drink a certain amount out of it. Yeah. And I remember I poured half of it out on the road on the way to the hospital. I've, I've had similar stuff because I've had to have... Long stories, but... I've had to have two colonoscopies because of some issues from being overseas. And they give you something to clean out your system. The The thickness is like a mix between like milk and like olive oil. Like it's that thick. And it's the hardest thing in the world to get down. And you have to drink like a half gallon or a gallon of it. Like it's a lot. It's terrible. And it's every 15 minutes. And the last time I just started throwing it up like crazy. And we just had to call a doctor and be like, listen, I can't do this. And he's like, well... Just get down what you can. <laughs> and I was like, because I was like, I can't do this to myself. But yeah, it, it looked, it was a fermented milk. The cookies, I don't think there was anything weird with them. Did they say anything? 
No, nah, man, it just looked like a good old chocolate chip cookie. Yeah. Um, the milk was like a specialty fermented South African thing. Yeah. It looked like 16 glasses of it, I think, was the amount. Uh, it, again, they were throwing up a lot. Uh, at one point, Tony threw up, and it looked like he threw up like four glasses worth. Yeah. It was a lot. And he was like, oh, I feel so much better now. Um, I I think that those type of challenges would be the hardest for me. Just where you're just like so full of something disgusting to where you feel awful. I hate that feeling. Well, because I, I made note of how much time had gone by. Okay. They basically drank milk and ate a few cookies for an hour and a half. Yes. Think about that. Think about our, our podcast for an hour and a half, right? Roughly, yeah. Think about like in between your statements that you make, just taking a swig of milk. The whole thick, hour and a half. Thick, thick milk. milk. 16 glasses worth. That's terrible. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, like, literally, I hate throwing up more than almost any other thing in the world. Like, I've had some very bad cases of, like, stomach flu in the last few years. And if I feel like that's coming on again, I'll take whatever medicines I can get to try to knock me out and get over it. Because I, I, I hate it more than anything else. It's pretty terrible. Yeah. Not many things worse than throwing up. No, and it's the build up to it, and like you know it's coming, and you don't want to admit that it is. Yeah, and, like it's it's awful. I really I I hate it more than anything else. And so uh, again, they they do that, and yeah, it took an hour and a half, but and Paulie finished his first, which you thought like, no, nope. oh well, that's a big deal, nope. and then it's Didn't like. Matter. Oh, all it, right. it did look like Tony was right after, but we don't know how that was edited. But it, yeah, there was there was no advantage. You knew neither one of them were going to quit. Like, yeah. even though we hadn't seen Polly do a challenge like this, you know he's like crazy enough. He'll he was going to do it. Well, he posts Joker memes. Yeah, yeah, that means he's serious. <laughs> he's business. crazy. Uh, so yeah, we knew that was happening. Um, I will say just the only preface before this. This is what kind of ruined the the. The, the elimination for us. Mm. Last week, we saw a preview of Polly and Kara in bed together talking. And that was the that was the time that they hooked up. It was showing. At this point in the episode, that hadn't happened yet. We had seen them talking about being together by a kitchen sink earlier, like real briefly. But that specific set of clips that we had already seen had not been shown yet. And so we were like, we know Polly and Natalie got to be back in the house because... They've already shown this clip of Kara and him looking up. That was my problem with the episode. Because I was like, Natalie's going to pull this out because we know that Kara and Polly have to get together. It was still equally a big deal for me. I still, in the back of my mind, was like, Bananas is going to pull this out. I will agree with that. And I was like, maybe they were trying to mislead us with this. and just. But at the same time, I was like, We've already seen it. It, it. They have to show it, and then inevitably they did within the last five minutes of the show. So you would completely remove the possibility that in the event that Polly and Natalie lose, they wouldn't let him go back in the house and cuddle with Cara? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I knew that wouldn't happen. That'd be pretty wild, right? That'd be stupid, because they, they made the whole thing like, if you lose, you're going home. You don't get a chance at a million dollars. No redemption house. So again, it, it, it did take me out of what should have been a really exciting elimination. It still was... I've I've mixed feelings about it, hmm. Cause I, again, I I don't know. It it was a cool concept, but at the same time, it was kind of anticlimactic. Like it went on for five and a half hours, which is insane. That's the longest elimination by far. Holding your arms over your head for five and a half hours. That's gotta hurt really bad. Yeah, I mean, Banana said he couldn't walk afterwards. Like he had the biggest like back spasms ever. And I don't think, so Banana's lost, right? Yeah. But I don't think like you can beat the guy up over that, man. You're holding your arms. No, I don't either, but I, I at the same time, I wish it would have been something where it was like... The other two had to be involved somehow? Somehow, yeah. Because their part was almost like, oh, at that point, they'd done it four hours ago. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, like, it, it ultimately did not matter. No. Um. Now, if they would have done, like, hey, who can do this, and your time is weighted against this time, and then however long they can hold the bucket, that's one thing. Um, but that's not what it was. And 
it ultimately they should have just done it from the beginning. Essentially, hey, hold your arms up. And the uh, the the other thing, the only reason they wouldn't is because they at least gave us something to watch at the beginning. Because otherwise, it'd be a very boring elimination. Because well, think about like, think about you know, Polly finishes first. Mm-hmm. What if what if Johnny wins that? It doesn't even matter that Polly finished first anymore. No, yeah, that, yeah, that's why I, I I don't agree. It was a very well constructed elimination. Yeah, um, because the they basically just said they basically just punted on the first half of it. Well, because in the construction of this game, when TJ's explaining it. Yeah. There's a there's an anticipation that someone's possibly going to drop their arms while someone's still in the process of, and then cookies. Come, yeah, <laughs> and it is not even close. And then come to find out, oh, people can hold their arms over their heads three times as long. Yeah, like oh, it's not like it, literally they'd been done with the cookies for four hours. And before, to be fair, I'm shocked by that. That's insane. Yeah, like I don't. I, could you hold your arms over your head for an hour? I'm gonna. Lean towards no, but for a million dollars, for a million dollars, you'd probably push yourself because you know you're going home. Like you, mentally, you would push yourself past your point of exhaustion to like where it's just like mind over body at that yeah. point. But I don't, I don't know the the. We know that they test these games. They always do. They test the dailies. They test the, the eliminations to make sure they're doable. Because um, remember the one where they were swinging the ropes across. Uh, that so many people DQ'd on, like Kara and Marie DQ'd on, yes. Ashley and Hunter. T- uh, TJ got on them because the stunt women in the area that tested it killed it, and they're shorter than her because they're like, we can't reach it. Yeah. And so they test all those. Yeah. Um, so uh, again, it was a weird elimination that ultimately I got pulled out of because we knew we hadn't seen any of the footage. Because we've we've known, again, we're 19 episodes into this season. Everything they show in the previous weeks coming up on or whatever, it happens in the next week at some point. And yeah. so they've conditioned us. It's not like they've tricked us before and tried to show something and then didn't show it. Like Everything that's been shown shows the next week, and I knew that we hadn't seen it yet. And so I was like, Natalie's going to win. So let me ask you this. We've seen Polly do it again now. Let me hear. I, I don't, so here, here's the thing, though. I knew you were going to get into this. Let me, all right, let me let me rephrase that. Natalie did this. Natalie right? Natalie did this. So let me. I'm sorry. Let me apologize because Natalie did yeah. this. Though Polly finished his food first, Natalie had the greater challenge. Oh yeah, for sure. And she did this. Yeah. How uh. How big of a deal is that? I I think uh, again this is this elimination to me almost felt like how a daily is like you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. like I could see this being a daily like oh kind of fun because you're gonna get fermented milk dumped on you and you just gotta keep your arms up if you hold it the longest you win that doesn't seem like an elimination to me I mean am I am I wrong on that that seems like something they would do as a daily. I agree with you. Um, and we know Natalie's good at dailies. Like, she just has been. Um, I I don't know. I, again, she won. Like, I, I, I'm not taking anything away from her. She, I, I don't think anyone, I think any of our listeners, anything, could have done that tonight. Um, but at the same time, it was kind of a lackluster elimination. I think she won it outright, but who knows? Your dad's calling you. Yeah, well, he's not my grandmother, so we're not going to put him <laughs> on the podcast. Um, again, I <coughs> as much as you don't want to side with bananas, he's like, this is the dumbest effing elimination. He said that on Twitter. It was a weird one. I think it's the weakest elimination we've seen. And especially considering the stakes. Yes. This was a weird one to go with. Because even, even like the ball pit thing where like Polly didn't do a lot, like that's a tough elimination. And uh, considering all of the eliminations we've seen this season, to have this one at this far in was, I, I get that it was technically the longest elimination in challenge history. And that's crazy that they were able to hold their arms up. But that's all they did. Yeah. It's just weird. 
This whole season's been very weird. And every everything involving Natalie and Polly has been very weird the entire season. So how do you feel about that? Because that's been a big... I've presented that scenario since, I don't know, 10 episodes back maybe. Yeah. That what if... What if Polly and Natalie spend essentially the entire time in the redemption house? They have. And they, they make did. it they make it to the final. They did. Where are you now? What what is your take on all that now? That there, it's happened. There's okay, so there's no disputing that it happened. I mean it did, yeah. clearly. I still think it's a very poorly constructed game. I think it's insane that people can spend like a month of the show in a house not doing any dailies. Like here, here, here would be my my way to fix this. If in the redemption house you were having to compete in dailies for advantages and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like as soon as there's a team in there, like you guys are like, hey, the first one to do this gets this sort of advantage, or uh, this team gets to sleep in a room, another one has to sleep outside for tonight, that type of stuff. That would be a better use of a redemption house. Essentially, they got to just hang out and do nothing for a month. I mean, I think you can agree with me on that. But here's what I would say. And they still got to go out. Yeah. And De- Derek K even brought this up from Challenge Man. Uh-huh. All right. That these are the rules. Like, that's what it is this season. Yeah. And they have succeeded as a result of the rules. They they did. I And I, I think... No matter, I, even if they win the entire competition, I don't think they're going to win. I really don't. Boy, what if? If they win this season, it will be a tainted record because they missed. They they lost three eliminations to begin with. They were in the redemption house for a month. The two eliminations they did win were basically won by Natalie. Like, and he's the stronger competitor, honestly, out of the two of them. But she's the one who pulled through the ball challenge, and she's the one who pulled through tonight. I'm not taking anything away from their wins, but they've had more, they still have had more elimination losses than they have wins at this point. And uh, the the eliminations they've lost were actually, other than the ball pit one, were most were pretty tough eliminations. Um, so I think yeah, it is part of the product of the game. I think the the game this season was flawed. Well, I'm going to tell you, like, WWE Hall of Famer Booker T. <laughs> you hate when I talk about wrestling. Because I know you're about to jump in. Do you in know what thing. I'm about to say? Go for it. Booker T, five-time world heavyweight champion, WWE Hall of Famer. Don't hate the player. Hate the game. I, I don't like the game this season. <laughs> I don't I don't like the game this season on based on stuff like that. I mean, you agree. This is not at this point. This elimination was very weak. Yes. Uh, I think you would agree that losing three eliminations is pretty insane and still having a chance. Um, regardless of how you feel about them, that's not a a, a precedent we've had in the past. If you lost that many eliminations, you would have been home by now. Uh, also, living in a house where you get to go out and you don't have to compete for over half of the show is pretty insane. I get it is what it is this season, but that's that's absurd. They're not competing. That's, that's my problem. But I, I know like they couldn't have been aware of like the layout of this game and how the redemption no, was no, going no, in. But no. What a strategy that would have been, right? Yeah, but there's, they didn't know that. I mean, think about that. Like, if you knew that... They're not smart enough to do that. Would that not them. be a strategy to go with, to say, hey... It, it, it would be too risky because you don't, maybe. Know, you don't know who's going to pull the double crosses. Yeah. Again, like, it's just... I feel like with this season, they tried to do too many twists and turns, and it diluted the overall... You think they tried too hard. It. I think it... I think it ultimately... Again, I feel like if Natalie and Polly win the whole thing, it will be probably the most disputed win in challenge history. But that's, any, anything, that's a bold statement. But anything that has people talking, right? I agree. Is a big I agree. Deal. It's, it it could be good for TV, but um, I uh, I think it's just weird. It's not, and I get it's it's a reality competition. It's not going to be fair, but 
if this happened to you and you were one of the teams that played it straight forward and were in and never got sent to redemption, and even if you did, you worked your way back, not lost three of them, basically, like, you'd be pretty mad that you lost your chance at a million dollars because of this, they somehow worked this weird new system that wasn't the uh, any sort of standard. The other three teams in the final didn't go to the Redemption House, did they? No. Did Cara Marie go? Uh-uh. Wait. Or did they? I don't remember. I don't think so. Josh and Sylvia definitely didn't. No, Cara Marie did. They did. Okay. They, they were the last one of the last groups because gotcha. they worked their way back in with Cam and Kaylee. And Hunter and Ashley definitely didn't. Yeah. Got so, it. So, uh, again, like, but, but the thing is, they were only there for like a, a couple days. Yeah. Um, Again, I, and I hadn't even thought about this until tonight. It just kind of came out. Here we go. Uh, it, I probably would have less of a problem with the Redemption House if they were still having to compete. Um, if they were still... And we've talked about, you know, it, it shouldn't have been as nice as it is. But if they were having to do dailies or, hey, you guys have to compete for advantages to, to keep you sane. Like, again... If you win t- today, you get to eat normal food and get to go out, but the loser has to just eat rice and crappy, bland fish. Or you get to sleep inside and outside. Or you get to uh, watch what's happening in the main house and other people don't. Like That type of stuff would, would make it way more interesting, in my opinion. And I've I've said this from the beginning. Like, if you're in a spot, Redemption House kind of spot... It shouldn't be as lavish as no, no, no. the main house. I, and I don't know if I would go to the extreme of what they dealt with on invasions at the beginning. See, I would. I th- I think I wouldn't have. I don't know. I said I don't know if I would go to that extreme, but I would not have a problem if that's what it was because they're the losers. They're right. they're in a losers bracket essentially. Right. Like they can play their way back in, but they're a loser bracket. And uh, I, I I would have no problem with that. And so maybe. Something like you just described could come into play where, like, maybe they have these challenges where, like, the winner gets to go sleep in a nice tent or yeah, something yeah. like that, like you know? better amenities. Yeah. yeah. Whereas the rest they of them have to sleep MTV, in, like... MTV should hire us. You know what? We bring pretty special ideas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. That's what you do in the middle of our sales pitch. We bring, We're pretty good. <laughs> we bring special ideas to the table. And uh, our minds are always working and turning. I I, tr- I honestly do try to be fair in my assessment of how I feel about people. I don't vibe with Polly and whatever, but I'm not going to take something away from him whenever they win. But I will say all their wins have been tainted. Mm. It is what it is. Here's the thing. I would go back and forth with you tonight. I'm too sick to not. Yeah. It's, it's not the night. You can't get into character tonight. It's not. The, oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. It's not a character. Uh. So, again... Natalie wins, and what we have left for the final, Hunter and Ashley, Cara and Marie, Josh and Sylvia, Natalie and Polly. And my feeling is this is not based on anything. We don't know any sort of spoilers. We don't know anything like that. I feel like one of those teams is going to have to endure like a purge type situation early on in the final. Um, This is just me based on how MTV has done things in the past, kind of the same reason why I feel like it's going to be at least two parts to the finale. I feel like they're going to have to do some crazy endurance thing, and then the last place team is automatically cut. The part that got me that led me to believe that this is going to be an intense final, Uh and I've said this for the longest, when people have to stand on something throughout the night, that is the mark of a brutal final. Yeah, which we don't know how long they have to do it, but they were standing on little pyramids, facing each other, holding each other in the rain. Yeah. Um, and we don't know how long. Uh, I don't remember what season it was, but a handful of seasons ago, they did this like bike ride thing, and you had to bike X amount of miles before you could go to sleep. The people that got first place got a nicer tent, a warmer tent. Second place is less so on. I think that was the one that uh, CT and DM almost won, and they're, like, his body gave out on him. Um, no, that one was in the snow. Yeah, th- this was in the snow. Was it? Yeah. I, well, I, mean, I don't remember. They all run together. No, because Nani was in that one that I'm, with the bike riding, and she got pissed off and almost quit and whatever. They, we, we, <laughs> we, I think we've all changed our watching habits of the challenge as this pro- podcast has gone on. Yeah. 
when we started, we were watching a ton of them, like back seasons or whatever. And it started all running together, and we just had to like take some time off from it. Uh, we'll we'll be jumping back into that though soon. Um, not too much was shown on the finale, other than it looked like there's running because Josh, at one point, is yelling at Sylvia. Mm-hmm. Um, there's the standing thing that you were talking about. There's an eating challenge of some sort. Always great. Always a crowd pleaser. Yeah. Um, what else was there? I don't remember. They got start in a helicopter. We know that. Uh, I didn't make any notes on the specifics of the, the, the preview for next week. I, here, here's the question I had. Uh-huh. And then there's a one last thing I want to get to because okay. they went back to the main house for just a little bit. Yeah. We did skip that. Yeah. Here's my question to you, because it was revealed that there is a rivals three ending to this. And well, that, I, I think we knew that all along though. Did we? I knew it. I've known it since the beginning. I think, I think TJ said it, but they haven't been playing up that angle. Listen, I have a brain, but it may be turned off tonight. Yeah. Do you see any of these teams, like whoever the winner is, turning on their teammate so, and taking them money? So, in case you have not watched Rivals 3, I still think it's personally the greatest moment in reality TV history for me. It's a big one. Um, basically, the way Rivals 3 worked in the finale is you had a teammate, but they kept individual time the entire finale. And if you were the one that had the best time, you got to decide if you kept the prize money or you for all for yourself or if you split it with your teammate who was your rival the whole season and it was there were three winners like normal first place second place third place right. teams and then they had to split the money or not uh third place was uh, Devin, Devin and, and Cheyenne yeah. they split the money yeah second place was Vinny? Vinny and I don't remember his partner was it uh it was someone Jenna May, it was someone like popular, I remember. Yeah. It may have been Jenna. They split the money. And then it comes down to Bananas and Sarah Rice. Bananas had the better time. He took all the money and ran. And I still think it was the Like, I feel bad for Sarah, but it made great television. It destroyed her, though. Oh, she's not been back. And she... I think in her contract you have to like do the fi- the reunions if they ask you to. She lost it on the reunion. Yeah, she wanted um, to take her clothes off. Sh- they wouldn't stop filming her, and so she said she was going to take all of her clothes off so they'd have to stop filming her. Um, she had big money for the, I mean, big plans for the money. So, regardless, that's what happened. That's what's going to happen this time. Except there's no first, second, and third place. There's only a first place, and you have to decide if you're going to keep all the million. Or if you're going to split it 50-50 with your partner, who's supposed to be a vendetta with you. And so do you see any of those people doing that? Hunter and Ashley, 100%. That was the one team I said they are gonna, I could see either of them Whoever doing wins it. is taking that money. But the rest the rest of them... I don't think it's clear cut for the rest. Um, I think Hunter and Natalie, I mean Hunter and Ashley, they, whoever wins is taking all of the money. Yeah. They hate each other. Um, Natalie and Polly, I don't think she would. I think he might. I think it's like 70-30. He'll take the money. See, I don't think so. He he wants to be a name on this show. He's a fan of this show. Well, if their relationship right now is any indicator... He didn't. <laughs> he didn't. Yeah. Um, Joss and Sylvia... I don't see it happening. I don't see him doing it. You think Sylvia would? I'm not saying she would, but it wouldn't be the most shocking thing in the world if she did. She's got a career, man. Yeah. They 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 don't have any like ties together. Like they're not like Natalie and Polly, like they're hanging out all the time. He lives in the UK. She lives in Kansas. She's got her own life. She's all in on this real estate stuff now. Maybe she did that. And she's done with TV because she's got all the money. I don't. We don't know. Like we're not. Call, and we don't want any spoilers. That would be wild. I think if that happens, like she might become one of my favorite people. And I and I I, I say that I would hate it for Joss because I really like Joss. He's a sweetheart. He is. Um, nice guy. But can, can you imagine? Like if if they win and then she has the better time and takes all the money, that'd be big. Uh, Karen Marie. <laughs> 
I uh, I feel like we know Marie. I feel like she wouldn't do it. She's uh, the female representative of the Smashing Heads community. I agree, and I feel like deep down, as tough as her like New York exterior is, I feel like she has a heart, and she ultimately has learned to at least tolerate Kara. Um, and it, uh, I don't feel like she'd take it. Kara, I think it could go like 70 30. She might take it. But we agree that the, the one team that is a certainty Ashley a and Hunter. Yes. They hate each other. Yeah. Uh, I think that would be crazy. Uh, if she wins, that's her second win, her final. I mean, she won the cheapest final of all time in Invasions. Right. But that's two times. That's a two-time winner. It's a big deal. There's not a lot of those. Uh-uh. If Kara wins and takes the money, <coughs> she was the only single elimina- I mean, single final winner last time. I mean, it's it's there's a lot of storylines at play right here. Yeah. Um Josh Sylvia never even been in a final before. Uh Ashley and Hunter uh, Hunter hasn't, but Ashley. Oh, Hunter was he? He broke his hand two two seasons ago. But it wasn't in the final. Uh-huh. It was like right before the final. I'm pretty sure it was the final because he couldn't hold on and do something. I, it may have not. I, it may have again. They all run together. Uh, you know, Paul. He'll get us on that. Paul. Paul. Not God, Pauly. he's not Paulie. No, he? <laughs> he's a lot nicer than Paulie. Man. Uh. So who knows? We 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 look into the one thing I did forget that we we talked about is I know you got one thing to get back into. Uh, Marie's crying pizza was kind of funny. Oh man, she's a sweetheart. Yeah, we love Marie. She, she's like, please don't vote for. Don't us. you hate it when she cries? Yeah, I don't like it. Uh, Not that it like offends you or like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it offends me. <laughs> but it just you feel you feel her pain. Yeah, it's it's real. It's not for TV. Yeah. Um. So yeah, what what do you want to get into? I know I, we skipped right into the the breakdown of next week. Well, so we get back into the main house after the elimination and uh, Kara's you know, all hot and ready for Polly since well, he's coming off that big win. But they're still saying, in the, even in their confessionals, oh, well, we're not going to do anything because he has a girlfriend. Nah, but our girl, Sylvia. But before that, Polly says, you know, I'm not going to do anything. I can turn that off. I just turned it off. That was going to be my question to you. How do you feel about Polly ha- having the ability to turn a sex button off? He doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't. Are you have- calling him a liar? Yes, because he hooked up with Cara. He's a liar. Oh man, a hundred percent. That's the, there's no debating that. Is there a sex button? No, and he, <laughs> even if he had one, he didn't turn it off. Uh, he from the beginning we knew he was going to hook up with Kara, but well before any of you know we knew what was going on, we just knew it was a matter of time. He's just been in the other house, so we didn't know. Uh, Hannah's theory is that him and Natalie had been hooking up in the the Redemption House, and the. The other theory is what if they're all hooking up? And it wouldn't surprise me. Um, Not the best functioning sex button if he has one. He doesn't have one. And it, here, here's the thing that here, it, it really sucks for his girlfriend that was back home because he kept talking it up. Cara, Cara knew what she was doing. She's like, oh, we're not going to because he has a girlfriend. She knew what she was doing. She was flirting with him. He knew what he was doing. He was flirting with her. He knew he was away. He kept saying, oh, I can turn it off. I would never do anything to jeopardize it. What sucks for his girlfriend beyond the fact that she got cheated on on national TV was they were like three days from being done filming. Like it looked like they hooked up like right before the finale starts. Yeah. And like he he had made it that far that we know of. And then they, they end up, he hooks up with Kara and Sylvia recreates it. And they're confessional. And, uh... Is there anyone that describes sex better? <laughs> I don't know. Did, did you miss that? No, I, I I saw it. That was pretty great, right? Yeah. Uh, it, it... Again, it... I feel bad. I really do feel bad for his, his girlfriend at home. Um, she got cheated on, and uh, it happened on national TV, and uh, he was really close to being home. But well, he's a liar. He's 100. percent Like he he, gosh, he didn't turn man. it off. Well, if anybody wants you wants to fight you on the sex button issue, they can reach you at at Jake Inkle underscore 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 whatever it is. All right, Twitter. 
That's my Instagram. I don't remember. You're holy hot dang. Yeah, that's holy it. hot dog. Yeah, holy hot dog on everything. Uh, yeah, it a, again. It that is what it is. Uh, real quick, even though Hannah's not here, she made notes. Run through. Do you want to read them? Or do you want me to read them? How about you take a portion? Okay, and then I'll take a portion. I'll read the first page and then I'll hand it to uh, Jake. She takes more notes than any of us. Um, because that's just her personality. And so here we go. Here's Hannah's notes, the abbreviated version of uh, what happened on the show tonight. Here we go. Polly talks about his girlfriend back home, but if Zach ever behaved that way, talking about me, <laughs> cuddled up and carrying Kara, laying in bed with Natalie, he wouldn't be sorry. He'd be dead. <laughs> Trivia, round two. Who doesn't know what a baker's dozen is? TJ's maniacal laugh, LOL. I wonder how bad that hurts. I'm assuming when they're going through the... When they're going through the wine. Yeah. Uh, I missed Ashley's math question, so she didn't even hear what she said. <laughs> I forgot about Tony getting sick. Uh, bloodlines, we oh, talked yeah. about. Um, and then, I don't know who the PM is, Prime Minister. I had two guesses. They were both wrong. I said Tony Blair or Margaret Thatcher, and I'm pretty sure Margaret Thatcher is the last one, but I could be wrong on that. Oh, my God. Is it a Bambi? Ashley is such, underline, a crybaby. Ugh. Hey, remember when Zach, not me, uh, the other Zach, got mad and threw his helmet? That was where he threw it at <laughs> Jordan or whatever yeah. on, a few seasons ago. I honestly don't know how Hunter's putting up with Ashley. I like the idea of crying pizza. I also like Ashley's gray yoga pants. Bananas and Tony versus Polly and Natalie was the perfect outcome for Joss and Sylvia. Marie's going to a final, exclamation point. To be honest, I really want to see Josh and Sylvia win the final. I'll let you read the last two pages. All right, here we go. That was fun. Uh, okay. Uh, you ready? Yeah, just read it. <laughs> this is a big moment. Okay. Milk and cookies elimination. Tony has to win this. It's the eating king. That milk looks like straight up cement. <laughs> I said it looked like paint. Yeah. But that's a good comparison, too. Yeah. Tony throwing up sounds like an actual garbage disposal. Good Lord, they went for almost six hours. Ugh, Polly. <laughs> what was that in reference to? <laughs> she just... Oh, uh, here's the... <coughs> uh, blown, blown our sales pitch here's, again. Here's the quote. Ugh, Polly. My girlfriend will be the first to tell you how much I love sex. Yeah, I just I didn't remember that. Uh... Oh, and then she gets into her superlatives. Oh, don't do that yet. Don't well, do that yet. Yeah, actually, we're at that point in the show. All right, so... Who smashed some heads, Hannah? Uh, TJ, when he announced another trivia day. He loved it. Yeah, he did. He yeah. 100% loved that. So what was your take on who smashed some heads? Who smashed some heads? Uh, I'm going to go with... Uh, I wrote down two names. Do you want me to go first then? Yeah, you go first. I put Natalie. All right. Because as weird and kind of weak of a final elimination it was, she won it outright. Like, Tony didn't matter. Polly didn't matter. It was between her and Bananas. She outlasted him. And she, I think it's more of a blow to his ego than it is anything. Mm -hmm. He got beat by one of his exes at a game he's supposed to be dominant at. And a game, honestly, you would think they would be favored in. Um, and uh, she won. That's right. So, I mean, it is what it is. She she got it tonight. Well, that was one of my names. Yeah. So I'll go with the other one. Sylvia. Purely for her explanation of what sex sounds okay. like. <laughs> That's great. You really like that, I guess. It was funny. <laughs> it was um, good. Good on Sylvia. Yeah. Uh, again, we, we'll... We'll get into some of that later. Is that, but is that PG-13? We're supposed to be PG. We are supposed to be PG. I don't think you can make the noises. Well, I haven't. Yeah, I, I thought about it. I knew you did. But I haven't. Uh, I'm too sick. So, uh, yeah, Hannah, who got their head smashed? Uh, Polly's girlfriend back home. She got her whole life smashed. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. You want me to go now? <laughs> yeah, you can go. I put Banana's Ego. I didn't even remember writing that. Because I can't see my notebook because my microphone's in front of it, but that's what I felt like is that he he lost to a girl, which I think hurts him more than it would other people. Mm. 
um, and he lost to an ex, and he lost to someone who's smaller and in all physical ways like inferior to him, as far as like strength and all that. You'd you'd think he'd be better at an elimination. Speaking of strength, that's a strong take there you just spat out. Yeah, that, that's what they call me. <laughs> the strong take. Yeah. That's a good name. That's not a good name. All right. <laughs> let's get yours. Uh, me and Hannah. We're both sick tonight. Oh, so you put yourselves. Yeah, we got our heads smashed tonight. Yeah. I'm I'm actually okay, so I'm 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 feeling pretty good. You uh, might not be in the morning. No, I, I will be. Um Yeah, so uh that's basically it. I again, if for some reason you skip the beginning of the episode because you don't like to hear us talk. Uh, we're gonna record a day late next week because I'm going. Me and Hannah are gonna be flying during the uh, f- f- at least the first part of the finale if it's multiple parts. So we'll record a day late. We'll be kind of MIA on Twitter and Instagram for a, the night the show premieres um, up until we record, and it'll go up sometime next Wednesday. Uh, again, let's get into high school album of the weeks. The week. Just the current week. <laughs> Do you want to read Hannah's? Kings of Leon. I feel like she's done like three of those already. Yeah. Because of the times. I don't really have anything to say one, about I that. I don't know which CD that is. I only know the one with... Uh, Someone like you. Sex on Fire. Yeah. It was the same album. I remember, weirdly, we were... Uh, I don't know when that album came out. It had to have been when we were in high, when we were in high school. Yeah. Because I remember we were at my grandmother's house... And that video came on MTV, and it was me and you and your stepbrother. And the video is just a bunch of like people from like the the like chest down, like dancing, from what I remember. So it's just a lot of people like moving around. And my grandma, who's very old school, religious. There we go. Uh, she she was very upset with all the people gyrating were her words on the TV. We made her upset. <laughs> Just about every time we were over yeah, there. Yeah, we did. Uh, one, t- one other time, me and your brother <laughs> uh, were watching uh, Wild Boys. Do you remember that show? Oh, yeah. With Steve-O and Chris Pontius. And yeah. It was like the, the nature show. Uh, her her husband, who is like our step-grandfather, who's like 93 now. He's great, though. Yeah, this is like 10, 10 probably more than that, Like probably like 12 more years ago. Yeah. He came into the kitchen, and we were watching it. It's probably late at night. He didn't know we could hear him because he doesn't hear well. He had his hearing aids out. Yeah. And he just saw it. And he, because again, they wear like Speedos and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, he was just like, bunch of gays running around naked in the jungle <laughs> and just left. And we were like right on the other side of the wall. We were like, what is he talking about? Uh, I just thought that was really funny. Um, no, he's a funny guy. He is. My favorite thing he's ever done where we were at a, a church service one time and one of our friends was uh andrew he was wearing flip-flops and he came up to talk to me and we were standing beside perry who's the guy the step-grandfather and he had flip-flops on and perry had a full cup of coffee and andrew was talking to somebody else and he tapped me he's like look at this and he he poured the entire cup of coffee on andrew's foot (laughs) good lord (laughs) Because uh, he, he's he, at that point, he's like eighty-two. And he's yeah. like, who cares? It, all over the carpet, all over everything. He didn't give a crap at all. And Andrew was like, why did he just do that? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Um, so I'll go with my album of the week. Yeah. Uh, when we were in high school, me and you were in high school. We were both in bands, and we would play shows at different places. That's right. Um. We played with some names that uh, a couple of them kind of became pretty big in that scene. Yeah. And uh, this isn't one of those times. I think my band had just broke up and you guys are still going. And you were playing a show in like Corinth, Mississippi. Ah, uh, yeah. At like a weird little bar or something like that. Uh, that was that was Tupelo. Tupelo, okay, Tupelo. Yeah. Um, and I mean, we none of us were old enough to be in a bar, but that's what it looked like from what I remember. It was a bar. Yeah. I don't know how that worked uh, out. I was like, I was like sixteen. Yeah, I was like, was like fifteen. I was like seventeen, maybe eighteen at yeah. that point. I was still in high school though. And uh, the people that put on the show, they were playing an album, and I was like, I really like this. I don't know what it is, but I like it. And me and your brother both were like, we. I mean, there was like twelve people there, 
It was yeah. it was a weird little show. Yeah. And I talked to the guy that was running it. It was Portugal the Man's first album uh, called Waiter You Vultures. And uh, I don't think it's their best album at all, um, but it's still really good. And that's what got me turned on to Portugal the Man in probably 2006 or so, 2007, yeah. early 2007 maybe. Um, and so that's mine. I still love that band. Their last album that just came out, top to bottom, still great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that that's my pick. Uh, a weird little kid in Tupelo turned it on t- to me. Or we did we not do that for you? You weren't pl- picking that. Like some kid just was playing it like between the sets. No, but I mean, did our music not make you think? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't remember who was in your band at that point. You, uh, had you few, just you, you just had, hated our vocalist. You had a few changes that weren't great because he was all about the juice. I don't. Again, you you kind of you had three different vocalists in the time that we went through. This was the one that. Yeah, I know. Was I know who you're juice. talking about. Yeah. All right. Mine is, uh, um, protest the hero. Yeah, and it fortress. I just never could get into them. I didn't like his vocals. Like musically, I thought they were fine, but musically they're incredible. He his his vocals reminded me of almost like. 80s hair metal. Yeah, like Iron which, Maiden type stuff. Which I wasn't into when yeah. I first listened to him, but the more I like gave it a Priest, chance, one of those. I was like, man, this is really cool. I, it's, it's, yeah, it's that like old school metal vocals that I just don't, I don't like it. And they got a speed metal vibe to them yeah. too, like you would hear back in the 80s too. Yeah. So I still kind of dig them. I, again, musically, when I heard them, I was like, oh, they're fine. And then I was like, I really just can't get along with what he's doing um but i mean i remember a lot of people really liked him they just, they just didn't vibe with me for whatever reason not your flow no and uh again that's it's fine i just you know there's probably gonna be we have one guy <laughs> every week that always talks to us about our music picks yeah uh, i don't know his real name but uh i know what his instagram name is and we can't say it because that wouldn't be pg anymore yeah kids don't want to hear that yeah <laughs> uh but um. So we started a thing last week, where you pick a year. That's right. And we pick movies. So now we're in '96. Yeah, you pick. 19. That is 1996. 1896. <laughs> did you Did you notice, by the way, like back in like the early days of film, they made a. No one had ever seen it before. And you know, you had people playing the piano while the movies were playing because there was no sound. It was like talk. It was no talking. Yeah. One of the first movies they ever made was a video of a train speeding towards a camera. Oh, man. And people didn't understand fully what was going on. And when they would show that, people in the audience would freak out and like dive out of the way and stuff like that because they didn't know what was happening. That's pretty wild. Yeah. Uh, one of my other favorite stories like that is in the 40s or 30s. I can't remember exactly. Uh, the You know, the, the, remember the movie War of the Worlds? Yeah. It was a radio play back in the like 30s or 40s. That yeah. didn't include Tom Cruise. It did not. It had a big name. I can't think off the top of my head. Uh, a big a- actor from back in the day. Huh. Um, he was doing the, the voice work for it. It was a radio play. The problem is they broke into it like it was an emergency news bulletin. And... It was supposed to be this big spectacle of like, hey, this is this crazy story. Well, they did it, and it was presented as this is what's happening in the world, and this is facts. And so back then, like, you didn't have the internet. You didn't have TV. Um, yeah, I think it was Orson Welles who did it, uh, who was doing the voice. And uh, so what happened was people heard this, and they freaked out. Like, people legitimately committed suicide and like killed their family members and then killed themselves because they thought an alien invasion was happening and they were all going to die. What a time to be alive. Like that's insane. Like they, they after that like they're like we can never do anything like this again because they didn't announce it was a play or anything and they just broke into it and people were at home like you just listen to the radio with your family and they thought we were actually being invaded by aliens and like people legitimately killed themselves and killed their families to avoid being abducted or killed was it am radio i don't know I we, you know what it makes me think of no. is when we used to play like halo back in the day and you would put on fox and the hound i did used to do that <laughs> over the headset so anybody we were in a game with 
would just hear uh you had it on vinyl right yeah so um i had i still have it oh man we should play that back back in the day in um in halo days like you could hear the other team and they could hear you so you could trash talk and do whatever um it was a hostile place to do it um but what i started doing was when, we, when i was in college we would all play together with our friends and i had a record that told the story of the fox and the hound with yeah. songs and stuff and i would just take my headset off and then lay it by the speaker and make everyone while you're playing like this violent video game listen to the fox and the hound and people some people enjoyed it and some some hated it but i didn't care cuz i thought it was funny no i thought it was great and it was 1938 uh, by the way orson wells oh man that long ago huh uh uh-huh. you sure it wasn't am radio yeah ah i don't know I made that up. I feel like crazier stuff happens on AM radio. Um, yeah, it, it was often described as having led to an outrage and panic by listeners who believed the incidents were real. In some versions of the story, up to a million people ran outside in terror. However, critics later point out that the supposed panic was exaggerated by newspapers um, seeking to discredit the radio. Um, according to some research, fewer than 50 Americans seem to have fled outside in the wake of the broadcast, but it's not clear how many were, uh, really involved. We had to learn about that in college in one of my broadcasting classes because it kind of like changed the landscape of national broadcasting. Yeah. Um, so anyway, 1996, you want to, would you like to ask Hannah what she, Hannah, what what did you pick Hannah? Oh, well, you know, (laughs) that's not what she sounds like. Uh, she picked Matilda. Yeah, I saw uh, that. Still one of my top fave movies of all time. That's her saying that, not you. Not me. Yeah, you're reading that. But I will say, uh, this is me talking. Uh, good movie. Matilda's a good one. You know, I don't know if I've ever seen the whole movie. It's a good movie. Uh, Danny DeVito's in it, right? Danny DeVito is yeah. in it. I like most things he's in. Yeah. Like Twins. <laughs> yep, yep. Um... um. Yeah, I, I like most things Dane DeVito's in. I don't think I've I've seen that all the way through, honestly. That would be a good movie for the three of us to watch together. Well, let's, what was your movie pick? You were I was afraid you, we might overlap, but we'll see. Well, you set it downstairs, so you kind of ruined it. Harriet the Spy. Oh, that was the one? That was the one. I was going through my list because I didn't know the year until you got here. That's one of those movies that I had on VHS. It was orange. It was orange. All those Nickelodeon ones were. Yeah, that I would just leave in the VCR for days at a time and rewind. That's one that I don't think I ever watched all of either. Man, that's a good one. And it's deep, too. I read the book. I read the book in elementary school. It's deep. It's got Rosie O'Donnell in it. Oh, yeah, my favorite. You know? Uh, uh, No, I I, I read the book. Um, I read a lot of, like, spy books when I was in elementary school. It's got the kid from Small Soldiers in it, too. Does it? I believe that's the same kid. Did you ever see Small Soldiers? Yeah, but you also thought the kid from Air Bud was in How Far what Is a, Too Far. What a confusing movie, right? The Small mar- Soldiers? Yeah, the marketing for that movie was Soldiers, Good Guys, Gorgonauts, Bad Guys. Which is not true. No. Also, it was a PG-13 movie, but it was made to look like it was like a kid's movie. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, the, the I did. I remember I used to want some of those action <laughs> figures, so. There was a Small Soldiers video game, too, I think. There was. Yeah. Not sure how good it was. I don't but. remember. Yeah, uh, yeah. Harriet the Spy, good watch. I did watch Small Soldiers. Um, Not so, made in '96. No, well, it's probably around that time. It's close. Uh, so, do you have a guess of what mine is? There's some good ones in '96, like Space Jam was '96. Yeah. I didn't pick that because I figured that was too obvious. I mean, if you haven't watched Space Jam, um, I speaking of there is a uh, Space Jam two in the works with LeBron James, which you're not excited about. I'm I'm not. You're not a LeBron fan. I'm not a LeBron fan, but I'm not against it until I see it. Yeah. Um, uh, no, there were some good ones in 96. There's a lot of good movies that year. Um, Small Soldiers was 98, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you have a guess for mine? Charmed. <laughs> no. Scream was the number one movie in 96, by the uh. way. Uh, no, I picked Dunstan Checks In. 
You know what? That was on my potentials. I thought list. you were going to pick Jingle All the Way. I forgot you've already I've picked already Jingle, picked all, Jingle the way. all the Way. Uh, yeah, Dunstan checks in. I, Man, that's a movie like what you're describing. Like I would just leave in and watch all the yeah. time. Yeah, I love that movie. You can't go wrong with that's, a movie that's got an orangutan in it. No, and it had the same kid from the Santa Claus movie. Uh, yeah, uh, it had Jason Alexander from Seinfeld in it as his dad. Had yep, uh, Pee Wee Herman in it as like the orangutan expert. <coughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, he uh, he was trying to hunt down the orangutan and, and capture him. Uh, yeah, uh, and then like Dunstan is like running under tables and like making people fall into cakes. And I need to go back and watch that movie because I really liked it. Yeah, because I I don't remember the premise of how the monkey ends up in the hotel. Uh, it was snuck in by um, a rich evil guy who had a cane and he kept him in a suitcase. Uh, he seemed to be like some sort of smuggler of some sort. And he escaped and got in the air vents, and that's when the kid found him because his dad owned the hotel. Yeah. And at one point, they're running in and out of all the air vents and all that. Uh, oh, I remember that guy now. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about? He's got mustache and, yeah. and he had the cane. Yeah, real mischievous looking guy. Yeah, I, I feel like he's a was a character actor in the what 90s. What a deviant. Yeah, that, like, that is the perfect word to describe him. Yeah, I mean, you don't keep monkeys in suitcases. <laughs> no, you but, he, but he did. And, uh, yeah, I, I love that movie, and... I feel like the big brother was the same kid that was in the movie The Paper Brigade on Disney Channel. I don't even remember the big brother. Do you remember? I mean, the, I remember there being a big brother. Do you remember the I, movie Paper Brigade? No, but I remember Eric Von Detten. <laughs> he kind of looked like Eric Von uh, Detten. You know, Brink. Honestly. That's yeah. a good one. What year did Brink come out? Uh, I, I tell you what, we should do Disney Channel original movies at some point. Well, Brink would be number one. Yeah. It'd be up there. Johnny Tsunami would probably be Boy, up there. Boy, that's a good one, too. And there's some underrated ones, like... Uh, 98 is when Brink came out. Like True Confessions and uh, the Even Stevens movie. Wait, which one was True Confessions? That's where... Uh, is that what the movie was called? Yeah, I think that's what it was. Shia, LaBe- Shia LaBeouf plays a special needs Oh, yeah, kid, yeah, I remember that one. Which I have always said was his breakout role. That was his first serious role. Yes. Um, he was in Freaks and Geeks when he was younger, but... A more serious movie. Um, but this isn't a Disney Channel original movie podcast, though. You could, you could do you one probably of those. could do one breaking of those. down like one per episode. Yeah, Smart House and Lucky Boy, Lucky the one. Irish and S- Slam Dunk the Funk. Yeah, uh, that was was the, that the song? That was and uh, there was one scene in that movie. Yeah, where he he dances. Yeah, I know two two five the F five I V E. <laughs> yeah, the they were like. Irish boy band. Yeah. <laughs> or English or whatever they were. Yeah. Oh, man. Slam Dunk the Funk, uh, I still hold in a special place in my heart. Well, then you've got all those movies with the Lawrence Brothers, too, right? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. There's at least they two of them. They made some good ones. Yeah. Horse Sense. And then the one where they're, like, on an island. The Other Me, where the youngest one oh, yeah, clones yeah, himself. Yeah, yeah. Man. Oh, we man. Can't, we can't talk about all these. Can we not? No, not on this, epi- not on this <sighs> podcast. We're already uh, cl- over an hour and a half. Are we? Golly. Yeah. So... Again, uh, if you did not hear at the beginning of the episode or when I said it earlier, we will be a day behind next week. It's just the way our flights worked out because of the fires in California. If you're in California, I hope you stay safe and stay away from all that, and I hope they get it under control really soon. Uh, As always, follow us on Twitter at Smashing Heads, at Smashing Heads Podcast on Instagram, Smashing Heads Podcast on Facebook. Smashing Heads Podcast at gmail.com if you want to talk to us more in depth. And uh, again, we're on iTunes and Podbean if you don't have iTunes. We're also on Google Play. And I set up a Stitcher account, but I don't know if it ever worked. We'll, I don't know about that one. I think we get some downloads off Stitcher. Do we? Yeah. I don't know. I'll, I need to double check on that, honestly. But uh, again, it was a boys' night tonight. Next week, we should be back to normal, other than it being a day behind. And. I think we all agree it's at least going to be two parts. I think so. Even if it's like they, they lead up to the very final decision and then they do a reunion where they announce the actual winner. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we'll we'll be talking about this season at least two more weeks, uh, and then we've got some stuff planned beyond that. So uh, glad that you stuck with us. Uh, Hannah hopefully should be feeling better by then. Jacob should be feeling better by then. And we'll be in California this next week where it's warm and not snowing and 30 degrees. Uh, you guys will. I will not. That's true. I'll be taking care of your, your dogs. That's true. And cat. And the cat. So, 
Uh, again, as always, thanks for sticking with us, and we will see you next week, but a week, uh, not a week late, a day late. Yeah, that would be rough, wouldn't it? Yeah. Are you done? Yeah. We finished? Yeah. Have a good night, everyone. Hannah says it, too. Thanks. Zach says it. Bye. Say it, Zach. Uh, Have a good night, everyone.